There we go, y'all. There we go. Look at the bike, though. Sheesh. Let's get this joint going, man. Hold on. Y'all ready to hear this thing? Here we go. Here we go. Hey. Sheesh. All right, let's get it going, man. All right, man. So we here, baby. We here, man. Oh, yeah. First off, before we start anything, man, let's get this out there first and foremost. Buy you some merch, man. Tall guy car views. Don't worry about that. That's my phone, man. Let me put that outside for y'all, man. I got you. But um, tall guy car views merch, man. Buy you some merch, man. I got you know uh white, black. You know what I'm saying for right now. Go ahead and buy you some merch, man. Everything else is sold out, but I got hoodies. Uh, more hoodies coming soon. More sweatpants coming soon. Different color shirts coming soon, man. But for right now, I got the white with the red. I got black with the white. You know what I'm saying? Get you a shirt. I got them in tanks. I got them in shirts. Got all sizes, baby. So let me know what you want, man. I got all the infos in the description below on that show more. Click that show more and get you some some, uh, some merch and support the movement, man. I'd highly appreciate it. But y'all have my word. I told y'all when I get to 100,000 subscribers, I'll show y'all my life story. I'll tell y'all my life story, man. So brace for this, man, because it's about to be a crazy epic one, man. Just like that, here we go. All right, man. Most people, they want to say, you know, when they tell their life story, they want to say if they come from nothing or they come from, like, a real rough childhood, man. I know a lot of people hear that all the time, and it's all relative because one neighborhood could be tough, another one could be tough. You know, some hoods might not be the same as this hood. Nonetheless, I grew up in the hood, and I grew up in a real rough neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? That being said, I grew up in uh, North Minneapolis, man, which is, uh, which is a pretty tough, rough neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Here in Minnesota, anyway, you know, um... But it is nonetheless, that's where I grew up. I, I've lived in other states for a short period of time, you know what I'm saying? But primarily, I lived in uh, Minnesota my entire life. Like I said, man, it's a, uh, the north side of Minneapolis is a, is, a, is a tough city in itself, you know what I'm saying? Or a tough side of the city itself anyway, you know what I'm saying? South side of Minneapolis, north side of Minneapolis, all the same, you know, but it's, they're both hoods, two different hoods, you know what I'm saying? But um, growing up over there, man, you got to understand what I look like, you know what I'm saying? I'm a light-skinned green I do with curly hair, you know what I'm saying? It's safe to say shit was tough for me and all my brothers growing up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just me. Me and all my brothers, you know what I'm saying? So safe to say we got in a lot of fights, man. And we had to battle our way through a lot of different things. You know what I'm saying? Including adversity, including being tested in every way, shape, form, and fashion. You know what I'm saying? But we did that. You know what I'm saying? And we're here. So it's tough because when you light skin, you know what I'm saying? You're not, <laughs> you're not really winning with black people. And you're, not, you're definitely not winning with white people. Because white people see you, they just think that's a black guy. Black people see you. It's a white boy, you know what I'm saying? You don't really get the credibility of being black and white. You definitely don't get the credibility of being white, the credibility of being white, you know what I'm saying? So it's tough to say the least, you know what I'm saying? Just being light-skinned in life, period, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't ever really know where you mix up at when you're a kid. When you're a kid, you're just a kid, you know what I'm saying? You're thinking we all the same, you know what I mean? But, nah, when you're in the hood, it's different, you know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure if I was in the suburbs, it would be different, too. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be treated like I was white out there. And in the hood, I wasn't treated like I was black. I was treated like I was white, you know what I'm saying? Like a white boy, you know what I'm saying? Curly hair, green, I do, you know what I'm saying? But that's what we dealt with, man. My mom and my dad were separated um, from the time I was born, you know what I'm saying? It's a crazy story, man, about me and uh, how I was born, you know what I'm saying? Those who know, they know, you know what I'm saying? But it's safe to say that my mom and dad were not together. Um when I was born, you know what I'm saying? They did for maybe a little bit, and then they were like, yeah, phew, gone. Anyway, um, I, did, I was fortunate enough to have both of them in my life. My dad was a dude that was in my life, and so was my mom, you know what I'm saying? My mom's always been my number one supporter, though. She's always had my back no matter what. My dad has nine kids total. My mom has four kids total. So you got to think, that all we all don't have the same mom and dad. A lot of people in the world, they don't have four brothers and four sisters, you know what I'm saying? But growing up, man, I never looked at my brothers like they were half-brothers or my sisters like they were half-sisters, you know what I'm saying? I looked at them like they were just my sisters and they were just my brothers, so... We full blood in and blood out brothers to me, if you ask me. My dad, he was more the strict dude. My mom was more the laid back, which I liked. <laughs> now, even, now, even though my dad was strict, you know what I'm saying, he had some cool moments, but to the core of him, you know what I'm saying, my dad from the south side of Chicago, Robin Taylors, you know what I'm saying, so to the core of him, you know what I'm saying, he a real street nigga, you know what I'm saying, so he did the best on what he could do. All he knew, you know, is that he didn't want us, or he didn't want to be like his dad. My dad's, his, uh, my dad's biological father was not in his life, you know what I'm saying? So he did, like I say, he did the best of what he could do with what he had growing up, you know what I'm saying? So he did better than his dad because his dad wasn't even around, you know what I mean? But nonetheless, my dad moved up here from uh, Chicago, you know what I'm saying, and met my mom. And ran from there, that he obviously had, they obviously had us. My mom, she's like from the country type in Minnesota, kind of, almost, kind of, sort of, you know what I mean? It's not so country, but it's still type country, you know what I mean? But uh, she lived with her dad. My mom's mom died when she was six years old, so my grandma technically died when my mom was six years old. But my mom did have her dad 
and then her dad remarried with her stepmom now. So I was told that I never knew my grandma or my grandpa on either side. You know what I'm saying? I know my grandma on my dad's side. I know more of my black side of my family than I know my white side. I really don't know none of them at all. You know what I'm saying? A few, but not nothing crazy where I feel like we have a relationship. You know what I'm saying? But on uh, my black side of my family, there are people on my black side of my family I actually have relationships with. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, my family ties weren't close on my mom's side or on my dad's side. So we all kind of just did went YOLO. You know what I'm saying? We had our own little separate families, and that's kind of who we clicked up with. You know what I'm saying? We ain't really had no real family endeavors or nothing like that. I don't really have a. Uh, I, my dad's uh, mom is still alive. Her mom's still alive, and then her mom was also still alive. Um, but she ended up passing. Now there's two grandmas left on that side, but I really don't know them either. You know what I'm saying? I know them, but I don't. You know, um, there's a lot of variables that went into that and why we don't have a good relationship, you know, which I'm not going to touch on now, but just know that much. And on my mom's side, I don't know none of them at all, really. So that just is what it is. But I was told um, that my mom was physically abused from her dad. You know what I'm saying? Used to beat the living shit out of her. You know what I'm saying? Like, just obsessively. You know, um, it's crazy, man. You know what I mean? So she ended up running away. Uh, ran away to the city here in Minneapolis and um, met my dad. You know, what I mean? my dad came from Chicago. She was coming from the country. My mom was homeless, eating out of garbage cans, lived in shelters, all that. Then she met my dad. You know, my dad was on the upcoming. He was trying to grind too. You know what I'm saying? Both didn't have nothing. They both come from absolutely nothing. You know what I mean? And they came together and they tried to make something. And they did make something. They made uh, some babies, you know, and uh, now we're here. But ultimately, um, my mom and my dad ended up separating because, you know, my dad just couldn't keep his dick in his pants. He always cheating, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my mom, you know what I'm saying? She just, she wasn't having that, you know? And my dad, my dad used to physically abuse my mom to be all the way real with y'all too. My dad was a, uh, he used to beat women, you know, it's my mom, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, you know, he come from a certain life, man. You know what I mean? He don't do that now. So the not define who he is now, you know what I mean? But he did, he used to do that. And uh, my mom went through that, man. After my mom and dad broke up, you know what I mean? My mom went on the date. Uh, went on to date a series of guys, you know what I mean, that not only physically kept abusing her, but mentally, you know, and emotionally kept abusing her as well. You know, there's been so many times as I, as a kid that I can remember witnessing my mom literally getting beat, you know what I'm saying, and I couldn't do nothing about it. You know, there was uh, other times, you know, where I've seen my mom with black eyes, you know, broke ribs in the hospital, you know, this and that, fractured skulls and all sorts of crazy shit, man. To be all the way honest, man, uh, even though my mom was going through that, getting physically abused, my mom would never ever let nobody or no dude she ever talked to physically abuse us. And to be all the way true and be completely honest, my dad wouldn't have went for that shit either. My dad would have killed somebody before they let uh, them hurt us, you know what I'm saying? And that's one thing I can't say about him. But enough about them, man. Let's get on to my life. That's what y'all tuned in for. Let me, let me tell y'all a little something about my life now. Well, that was kind of about my life, but... Yeah, whatever, y'all get the fucking point. Now this is a fact, out of all my siblings who could be possibly or potentially watching this video, <laughs> whether they tell me they are watching or they don't, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they can vouch that for the fact that I was definitely the one who got in the most trouble all the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? I was always getting ass whoopers here, ass whoopers there. It's just, I was always getting in trouble, man. And I was always getting ex expelled from schools, suspended from schools, and it always had something to do with fighting. I got expelled from one school, for stabbing a kid, you know what I mean? I was, uh, shit, what, what was I? Sixth, seventh grade, or something like that, man, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, it's tough being light-skinned, green-eyed, curly-head nigga in the hood. And I started, uh, I started smoking weed at an early age. And to be completely honest, man, I started smoking weed with my dad. I had to be like 11 or 12, you know what I'm saying? No more than 13. I was probably like 11 or 12 when I first started smoking weed. And in my dad's defense, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my dad, he grew up, like I said, he grew up in the South Side of Chicago, man. He did much crazier stuff with his mom, and they, they trust me, he's got a crazy story, you know what I mean? But um, he knew we wanted to smoke weed. He knew we was gonna get into all them kind of things. So what my dad was, he did. He took a different angle and a different approach. Instead of, you know, doing what most people do, going to the D.A.R.E. program, and I dare you not to do drugs. My dad was like, I know you're gonna do it. And he know we wanted to do it, you know what I'm saying? He just was like, you know, I'd rather y'all do it with me in a safe environment and try it in a safe environment, not to say you rock with it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? But I'd rather you try it with me than to go try it with somebody else and they got laced PCP or some laced up in the drug. You know what I'm saying? It just, it made sense, you know what I mean? But I know a lot of people, that's probably like, what the fuck was he thinking, you know? But it made sense, man. If you ain't been in his position, then you can't really judge him. Now, I know that's a little bit off topic, but even through all the suspensions, the being expelled from schools, the smoking the weed, all that, excuse me, I still managed to somehow <laughs> to make it to high school. Now, when I was in high school, did I actually go to high school? No, you know, I was in high school, but I didn't actually go to uh, go to class. You know, that's what I meant to say. Um, I mean, I was, if I was, if I wasn't uh, in class, I was wandering the halls. I would, during, this is my freshman year, my only year of high school. And then after that, I would, you know, I would wander, you know, I wandered the halls, 
uh, be out there uh, leaving, going on lunch break. When like the seniors get to go on lunch, I would just leave and not come back. I'd go home, you know what I'm saying? All that good stuff. Or I was either uh, getting in the fights and being suspended. It was, it was one or two. I used to have truancy calling my mom, all sorts of crazy stuff, man. I just was not with high school. I was not a popular kid. I did not have fresh gear. I was uh, I was a nobody in high school, an absolute nobody. And the thing was, though, I wasn't tall, athletic. I wasn't nothing of what y'all see today, you know what I'm saying? So you got to understand. I used to steal my oldest brother's shoes to try to wear them and look fresh because I was, I was poor. I ain't have, I ain't had no dope ass shoes. I ain't had no dope ass outfits. And I think high school is made for people who have money. You know what I'm saying? Like who have the nice shoes, who have the newest of the new clothes, and you know the new haircuts, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't get the, I wasn't privileged enough to have all that. So high school didn't work out well for me at all. I was not uh, popular in high school. Just I don't think high school is a great place to be, man. If you ain't, I wasn't no, I wasn't bullied or no shit like that. Now you know what I'm saying? But. It's just, man, you got to you gotta be a certain, you got to be following trends in high school to be in them popular crowds and all that. And I couldn't do that. So I didn't, I just ultimately didn't just like it together. You know, I didn't like it all together. Ultimately, I just ended up saying, fuck school. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't like it. I, I wasn't fitting in the crowds. I wasn't tall. I wasn't who I am today. You know, I was actually like shorter, scrawny. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have, I ain't look nothing like how I look right now. I looked something like the Captain Phillip dude. You know what I mean? I am the Captain. Now. I look more like him. You know what I mean? At, uh, at that time. So it's just safe to say it just wasn't a place for me, man. You know, but um, ultimately I did end up saying just forget school altogether. And then, but after that though, after my freshman year, I, uh, I didn't even stay my whole freshman year. I've been stopped going. But uh, after that year, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try uh, high school again. These damn mosquitoes, boy. Um, I, I, let me try high school again. And I ended up trying alternative schools and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately I just said forget it and just got in the streets. After I made that decision, Man, it was just a downward spiral from there, man. It just it got ugly and more ugly, you know. And then once I started getting in the streets, man, I started stealing stuff early at a young age, man. It was just all bad. <laughs> what I mean by that is, man, before you knew it, I was over north. Well, I lived over north anyway, but I was over. I lived in the low ends. I lived in the mids. I lived in the highs. I lived everywhere over north that you could think about, man. Um, but after that, man, I found myself on the corner. You know, we used to have a store called Snow Foods. I used to be right in front of Snow Foods, selling nickel and dime bags of weed, fighting all the time. You know, it was, I even tried selling crack at one point in time. One of the guys I knew, you know what I'm saying, he uh, he owed me some money for weed, and um, I could he didn't have the money for the weed or the weed, so you know that I loaned him. So he had some crack, so he gave me two little forty uh, two little forty crack pills. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but whatever. He gave me those. Man, he put them in a little matchbox. Man, I had that matchbox in my car for like a week. I was so paranoid to move that shit. I felt like every every cop I drove by knew I had crack in the car. I was I was paranoid as hell for that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I ain't gonna act like I was Pablo Escobar ear selling. No, I was nickel and diamond with weed and with the crack. You know what I'm saying? I just had them little two rocks. It took me the longest ever to sell. I ended up selling it to a crackhead, man. I forget dude name, but uh, for a, a, a bag full of coins, man. It was I, mean, I was just brought that shit to a uh, Walgreens or whatever it was at the time and poured it in there. And they counted on my change and they got the cash out, man. So, safe to say I never sold crack again after that, though. <laughs> like I said, man, I'm not going to glamorize the life I've lived or nothing like that. And I definitely ain't going to glamorize selling no drugs. You know what I'm saying? Because it, that, that shit wasn't worth it at all to me. You know what I mean? Um, But I was never a big drug dealer. You know, the most weed I've ever bought at one time was either QP or half a pound, somewhere around there. You know what I mean? Uh, or somewhere in between. But that was as big as it got, QP to half a pound, you know what I mean? I can't remember exact numbers, but, and then I would literally nickel and dime the whole damn thing to maximize my profit, you know what I mean? And as far as crack, I never sold that again after that whole situation. Like I said, man, I'm going to keep it all the way true with y'all. I had aspirations when I was selling drugs, weed and like the little two crack pills. I had aspirations to be a much bigger drug dealer than what I was. I would see like the dope boys in our hood, man. Uh, they be living, man. Had the big ass, you know, the cold old school whips with the with the big stupid chunky rims with the bangs in the back. Fresh clothes, had the hoes, they had the shoe, they had everything, man. That you that you want to have in the hood, you know what I mean? They had that, so I did have aspirations. When I put my mind to some, I give it everything I got. Drug dealing was no different. I gave it everything I got. It was just it just took me a while to move up, you know what I mean? Like I started with an ounce, then went up to two ounces, three ounces, then you know four ounces to make the QP, you know what I mean? So then after the QP, it's just I just kept going a little bit, a little bit up, you know what I mean? But then one day when I was selling, I used to keep my re up money in a, a shoebox in my trunk, you know what I mean? Because I was always trapping in and out of my car. So if I sold out of something real fast, I had to call up the blug, hey man, I need to meet up with you right now, and grab it again, just in case I had some more shit to sell. So. Ultimately, I was uh, selling out of Snow Foods one day, and then the Jump Out Boys, we called them the police when they roll up in the van, and they jump out the van for those who don't know. You know, they, they did that, boom, jumped out. They got me and a few other dudes I know, you know what I mean? Um, 
obviously they took my uh, I had my car keys they see my car they took my car I had a color Sierra at the time they took that color Sierra they took the money out of everything that was in the car which was the money the scale the weed everything they took that so ultimately I got busted and um yeah it was just ugly at that time I was um 16 that's 15 no 16 I was 16 years old and uh so they arrested me booked me and then let me go you know what I'm saying and then uh my mom picked me up from there she still talks about that to this day she was bad she was pissed <laughs> but like I said man after that it was safe to say that my drug done days were over not because I got arrested or I was scared I, it was over because like I just told you it took me so long to move up from just like you know a half ounce to an ounce to all the way to a QP half pound whatever it took it took me a long time to move up there, you know what I'm saying? After nickel and diamond, everything, you know what I'm saying? So trying to make the, the bag look chunky, stuffing it in, bending it around, trying to make it look like one big plump little nickel or dime, you know, trying to, it's a lot of man hours you gotta put into selling weed and drugs and all that stuff, man. And then I hate when people glamorize it because they ain't all this cracked up to be, man. You gotta be really doing a lot to really maximize a lot of profit, you know? But um, like I said, man, the, the drug done days were over after that, man. Because it was just, it's just too hard, you know what I'm saying, to go from ground zero to start it back up. Like, I was just like, no, it's not even worth it. Because at any point in time, it can end. So let me try my uh, talents at a real job. So then what I did was I started working at places like, uh, my first job I ever had was working, um, I was what? I was working at the YWCA. I was a daycare for little kids, you know what I mean? That was cool. We got like $300 every two weeks, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing, but it was something, you know what I'm saying? It's better than any, nothing, you know what I mean? Then after that, I got a job at Arby's. And I worked at Culver's. I worked at Menards. I worked at Marshall's Retail Store. I worked at Subway. Um, what else am I missing? I worked some other places too, man. But, oh, yeah, I worked at Wendy's. <laughs> did I say Culver's? I did. Did I say that? Uh, Man, I, I worked a bunch of damn places, man. It's, 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 I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Man, but ultimately, it was uh, it's funny because even when I was working those jobs, I was never 100% legal because I was always stealing from every job I ever worked at in some form or fashion, except for the YWCA with the kids. I never stole nothing from there. Um, but all the other jobs, man, I stole from them jobs in one way, form, or fashion. Man, and I'm going to break I'm gonna break it down for y'all, man. I'm going to tell y'all what I did at every last one of these jobs. Man, at Arby's. I stole cash out of the register. I would swipe a card, you know what I'm saying, take the receipt. If it was a, a, over X amount of dollars, you didn't have to sign. So I would take that, boom, take out some cash. Every day I probably made $300 every day doing that, you know what I'm saying? We're not, I was just dumb because ultimately I ended up getting caught because I was overcharging the people for these fast food. So people were calling in from their bank statements saying, hey, I ain't spent $40, I only spent 20 Dumb, world dumb criminal. So it's safe to say ultimately I ended up getting fired from Harvey's for sure. But then after that, uh, I got hired and fired by my Uncle Ricardo, man. Uh, I was working at Culver's. I just wasn't getting along with others, man. I wasn't I wasn't able to take uh, criticism or no uh, authority from any. I had authoritative issues, authority issues, whatever you want to call it. Dairy Queen. I worked at Dairy Queen, man. Uh, like I said, I was 16 at this time, too. I worked at Dairy Queen for a while. I didn't actually end up quitting Dairy Queen. Uh, I mean, I didn't end up getting fired by Dairy Queen. I actually ended up quitting uh, because I got a job at uh, Marshall's Retail Store. But when I was at Dairy Queen, I used to steal, man, I used to steal Dilly Bars, Parfaits, Blizzards, chicken tenders, you know, just food and ice cream, man. Just trying to eat, baby. Now, when I started working at Marshall's retail store, boy, I used to rob them blind, man. That was, that was crazy. I used to do like inventory, so when like the the clothes, the new clothes would come off uh, um off the truck, I would take them and then put them on hangers and then stock them out there, right? So what I used to do was, when I took them off. I would, you know, stuff clothes around. I'd wear pants and like a hoodie, and I'd wear. I'd put like four or five shirts under my um, legs or in my leg pant leg, and then the same on this side. Wrap some around my waist, inside the hoodie arm, inside the hoodie arm. Wear like four or five shirts, and then put my hoodie back on. You know what I'm saying? That you would never be able to tell the difference. And then um, when I go on break, I would just go out there and unload, put all the clothes in my trunk. And then I go back in, do it again. I'd probably get like a 30 minute break and a 15 minute break because I used to work long days there. Um, so I'd do it every break. I would do it when I first walk in to going into my first break, do it again going into my 15 minute break, and then do it again after I leave because I would close the store. I would uh, leave and do it again. So I would unload three times every day. It's safe to say I had bags on top of bags on top of bags of fresh, clean ass clothes. And like I said, man, growing up in the hood, that's what you want. You want to be fresh, you want to be crispy, you want to be all that because you ain't never had that before. So, like I said, in high school, I ain't get to have that. So, I was living when I got the opportunity when I was in Marshalls. And I was anybody who I rocked with, I was stealing for them too. Kids, uh, selling it, you know what I'm saying? All that, man. I was doing all that. It even got to the point, man, where uh, I had a couple of my co workers in on the cahoots with me, man. I came in, uh, showed them game. You know what I'm saying? Taught them some things, and then I even taught them a little more. Cause one of them was working register. I was only doing the inventory, so, so the other one would do the fitting room. One would do the register, 
and then one was uh, I was in the inventory. So what I do is like, let's say I had somebody come in, like I was stealing all the stuff I was doing three times a day, but then next thing I would have uh, somebody going to the fit room, or one of the people I know, and then like, let's say you go in there with 10 items, right? They give you a 10 item card. But then I'd have them, if they went there with 10 items, I had a person give them a two item card. They only got to come out with two items and then they'll stuff the other eight down. You see what I'm saying? Because the camera would only pay attention to the motherfucker, the, the card number that people gave them. So I had I was doing that. And then at the same time, to do that to register, I would have him uh, go along with my lick. I, since I did the inventory coming off the ship, I would take like little dollar clearance tag things and then I would stick them on like a $40 shirt. So you'll get a $40 shirt for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? And then what I'd do it is once you go to the register, man, <laughs> You would have like, let's say if you were spending a hundred dollars, right? You have a hundred in all one. So if the camera was looking, it looked like a lot of money when you're giving it to them, but it ain't really a lot. You know what I mean? Just it was a lot of finagles I was doing, man. A hundred percent. Like I said, man, I ain't glamorizing. You know what I'm saying? Stealing and doing all that stupid stuff. I could laugh at it now, man, because it was just dumb. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't laugh at it then when I was getting caught and all that, going to jail and all that stupid stuff. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, I ended up getting caught. I did get fired. You know, um, and so did the other two people, you know, they ended up catching all of us, you know. But um, the thing was, man, after that, uh, I ended up getting a job at Menards. The, you know, like Home Depot type store Menards. I ended up getting a job there, and uh, I was pushing carts. And I ended, I never got fired from there or nothing like that, and I never quit. Uh, not for a while, anyway. Um, I was pushing carts there, and the, I was getting paid every week. But, man, it wasn't no money that you got to put in hella hours. So what I started to do, man, I started to slowly but surely dip back off into the streets. And then next time at this time, I started burglarizing homes and all that. So I would literally go from working an eight, nine-hour day to burglarizing a home or working an eight, nine-hour day and having, like, a 30-minute break in between, rob a home somewhere near there, and then, you know what I'm saying, then go back to work. It was, it was crazy, man. After Menards, I ended up getting a job at Subway. <laughs> Subway, like I said, man, when y'all envisioning all this, don't envision a tall ass dude doing all this because I wasn't tall then. Um, I ended up getting a job at Subway, and then uh, by then I had escalated to robbing people. Now I was robbing people. The first time we robbed somebody, it was with like a like a fake gun, and you know how some guns be like clear, but it has like them little chrome pieces on it that make it look real. So what we did, we taped that, and then we spray painted the race black, took off the little piece in the front, and had a big like chamber hole type look. It was, it was risky business, but like I said, man. I wasn't robbing nobody. I wasn't robbing nobody in the hood or nothing like that to where it could like potentially get me shot or killed. So when I was robbing somebody with a fake gun, it wasn't nothing too crazy, you know what I mean? It was, and it worked, you know what I mean? So from there, it was just, it just escalated more and more and more and more. And then ultimately, man, we, we ended up uh, transitioning to uh, BB um, replica guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the ones that being sell for Walmart look just like a real pistol. It's just, you got a CO2 cartridge. We end up eventually moving up to those robbing people with those. And then after that, we transitioned to real guns. And then luckily, right after that, you know what I'm saying, we got caught, like literally right when the real guns started coming into the equation, we got caught. Now, during our robberies and all the little robbery escapades, you know, uh, we never robbed no children, we never robbed no women or none crazy like that, you know what I mean? We never robbed nobody in the hood either, you know what I mean? So we never robbed anywhere close to home and we never robbed no women and children. Like I said, that just wouldn't have been cool. It ain't, it ain't cool to rob nobody. You know what I'm saying? But you don't rob no women and children, and you definitely don't rob nobody where you live at in the hood. We always uh, rob businesses. We started off robbing pizza men, you know what I mean, for the most part. We used to rob, like, regular people and other stuff like that, you know what I mean? Uh, but then eventually we uh, led to pizza It led us to pizza men because pizza men were just an a easy lick. I know it sounds stupid, you know what I mean? And looking back as, as a grown man now, we were definitely the world's dumbest criminals, you know what I mean? Because... It was it was dumb because we would never like for to, to do a robbery school you're gonna get sent to prison for it. You might as well do something that's gonna give you like some good bread or at least it's worth it. We would literally rob people for sixty dollars from a pizza man. Twenty, fifty dollars, whatever they had on them. So at most I think the most we ever got from a pizza dude was like maybe three hundred bucks and we split that down the middle, so you're talking about hundred and fifty. So it was it was dumb and if we got lucky we might get a pizza or something, you know what I mean? It's, I'm not joking at the robbing the people. It's just it's just stupid. I look back and I'm like, wow, we were some really dumb criminals. And if um if we were lucky, like I said, we would probably get like a, a nice cell phone. At that time, they had like the new razors that came out, you know, the little thin ones that popped up and then they had the sidekicks, you know, the little flip screen like you know, I know that sounds outdated. A lot of people probably don't know what that is today if you're a younger person. But, man, it was, it was the top-notch phones then. You know what I mean? So if you got one of them, uh, you were big time. You know what I mean? And that's when the cameras first started coming out on the phones and everything. This is, you got to understand, this is like 2005, 2006. So, no, 2006. Yeah, 2006. So, it was, yeah, it was crazy back then, man. It was crazy. But even though that was uh, baby cash, we looked at, like, 
Like, we didn't have nothing. So we were just trying to get it by any means. No matter how many robberies it took, no matter how many licks it took, we would just figure it out as we went. We just winged everything. There was no real planning or nothing. That's why I said we was the world live world's dumbest criminals. You know what I mean? You ever see, watch that TV show, World's Dumbest Criminals? We were that, man. We were absolutely that. But I guess looking back at it, I think the way we looked at it was... You know, if you get enough of these little baby mook licks, you know what I'm saying, they eventually add up to something, you know what I'm saying, and then some turn into some more, you know, I guess that's how we looked at it, but it was dumb. I gotta say the part that we didn't think about the most through all the robberies that we did, we didn't think about how much this was gonna traumatize the person we were robbing or how much this would mess it up for their family and how they would have to recoup from that and everything. We didn't think like that, we were just selfish, man. We were just two niggas from the hood trying to make it, you know what I mean, but it was we were just young and dumb and just trying to make it by any means necessary, you know what I mean? So, safe to say we were um, we were eventually caught. One of the cell phones that we took, you know what I mean? This is when they first started coming out with tracking devices and cell phones, so if you lost your phone, like it's now, it's just regular. If you got a phone, you can track it if you lose it. You look on your iPhone and you find, find my Apple phone or whatever that thing is, you know what I mean? Find your MacBook, whatever. That stuff had just started coming out there, so it was unheard of to have a phone where you could track it in case you lost it, you know? So we didn't know that, not researching things. Uh, one of the people that we robbed literally uh, got their phone tracked. A SWAT team busted in our house, busted in my house. They got located and tracked to my house. Um, they, a SWAT team busted in the house around 8, 9 a.m., something like that. Uh, super dumb early. It was like February 2007. They busted in the house, arrest everybody, uh, me, my brothers. Um, even They even took my little two-year-old niece at the time. My, you know, my niece, Tania, she's uh, 12 years old now. She'll be 13. But they even busting the house. They got this bee flying around, man. What the hell? Yeah, they even busting the house, and they even took her as well. So they didn't know who was guilty, who was innocent. They just took it. They just rounded up everybody, herded them up, and took everybody. I'm telling you, man, if y'all ever seen that movie SWAT, how they busting them houses, and man, that's exactly how they busting your house. No lie. They literally came in about 20 deep. Beams, big AKs, all that crazy stuff, man. Shields. They was, they was strapped up and ready for war when they broke up into the house. I ain't going to lie to you. Now, I'm going to be all the way real with y'all, man. I'm going to keep it all the way trill. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, even though I grew up in the hood, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it was just in me to be doing all this stuff. It was something that developed over time and time and time of being in the hood. So if you're a smart person and you surround yourself around dummies, you know what I'm saying? Not to call people in the hood dummies, but if you're smart and you surround yourself around dummies, you're eventually going to start to do some dumb stuff. You know what I'm saying? Me being who I am, I had a good upbringing. I had, I had, you know, even though we lived in the hood, my mom had morals, my dad had morals, and they were both in my life. You know what I mean? They were both telling me not to they, uh, not to do that kind of stuff in my life. You know what I'm saying? But man, when you're in the hood, man, the, the bad overwhelms the good. You know what I'm saying? So it eventually turned into what I became. You know what I mean? And um, I started doing it and robbing people, and it just became what it was. But I'm not gonna lie to y'all, man. I was, I wasn't educated with the streets like I should have been hopping into something like that. You know what I mean? I didn't, I really didn't know what I was getting to. Like I knew if I got caught, you know what I mean? I could do some time potentially, some in the county. I didn't think it was gonna be like no prison time. Like I said, man, growing up in the hood, man, you either like a basketball player or some kind of athlete, or you know what I'm saying? You like a school person, you know what I'm saying? There's really no in between, you know what I'm saying? Or you was in them streets. And so I wasn't in school, I wasn't school smart and I definitely wasn't no athlete. So, it was only one other option. I looked at it like I got to be in these streets if I really want to come up. I can't do it by working a job because this ain't, this ain't paying nothing. And I'm putting in, man, overtime and hours and all that. This ain't, this ain't cutting it. This ain't cutting it. You know what I'm saying? So, I got in the streets. And then, so, even though that wasn't something I necessarily wanted to do, it was something I feel like I had to do. You know what I'm saying? And ultimately, it ended up costing me some years in prison of my life. And you got to understand, at this time, I'm 16, 17 years old. I ain't even 18 yet, so I'm feeling like I got all the answers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this happened? Okay, I can do this. Or that happened? I had an answer for everything. You know what I'm saying? Even though I really didn't, I would, I would pretend like I had an answer for everything. You know what I mean? Because nobody tell me nothing. So, led to my demise. So, now shit's getting real. They got my brothers, and they took my niece, and we all locked up. They ultimately ended up doing their research, found out it was me doing the robberies, and they let all of them go. Now, three days later, the investigator come talks to me. I stick with my, I'm like, man, you know, I had three days to sit there and say, I ain't do this, I ain't do that. I'm, I got a game plan in my head. And then uh, when they come in there and talk to me, they didn't have nothing on me other than people, like <laughs> some real people saying it was him, it was him, it was him. You know, that's all they had, you know, but other than that, they had nothing. You know what I mean? They had people saying like, because you know, dude could tell it was me or whatever, there was no, eyewitness or nothing like that they had a description of the car which fit the description of my car you know um they found the phone obviously they found uh the replica guns and all that at my crib 
um, you know, stuff like that. But not nothing like I could, I probably could have beat it. You know what I'm saying? But I had a few other people pointing at me. I probably would have got subpoenaed. You know, to uh, come point the finger at me in court, or was they would have went to jail. So they would have definitely, you know, pointed the finger. You know, but um, that's all they had. Now I'm gonna be all the way true with y'all, man. There was recordings. I ain't gonna say who the recordings was from, but I, there were some recordings, man. When I talked to the investigators, like, oh, you didn't do it, huh? Oh, you trying to stick that story? Boom, played that button. You know, state your name. Boom, they state their name. They got a statement. Another person, state their name, got a statement. You know what I'm saying? So it was out there. So, you know, like I said, I wasn't street smart and I wasn't school smart. I was uneducated in both. So, you know, I'm thinking like I know what to do, but I really didn't know what to do, man. And then they, they was like, hey, man, you might as well go ahead and try to save face. You know what I'm saying? Tell us the truth. You know what I'm saying? Tell us that you did these crimes and the judge will be leaning with you. My dumb ass. Here I go. And I did the first 48, you know that first 48 move when, when they, they're like, hey man, I ain't do that, man. I don't know what y'all talking about. They go in that bitch harder than the motherfucker at first. And then they like, man, they put their head nod and they do that little shake. Man, okay, I did it, man. It was me and little booby, man. That, that's what happened, man. I sat in that motherfucker and, and, and told on my damn self, you know what I'm saying? And um, it worked out for the better because I needed to be locked up anyway, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I probably would have been shot, dead, or doing life in prison. And that's a fact, you know what I mean? But. Yeah, I first 48 in my damn self, told on my damn self, you know what I'm saying? Like, they had, they had like, you know, some some compelling evidence and all that, but ultimately, I ended up telling on myself and gave them the damn case. Dummy. Long story short, man, I was sentenced to pretty much six years, and I did four years. I went in, uh, I got locked up initially uh, February 2007, and then I got out of prison February 22nd, 2011, so total of four years, man. But I ended up getting real tall when I was in prison. You know what I mean? Um, my little brother, my little brother used to come see me, man, Derry. Y'all seen him in my other videos with the dress, and then he cut his hair, and then he got married and all that. Yeah, he, um, he, man, shout out to him, too. Shout out to you, bro. Love you, bro. Um, he used to come see me when I was in prison, and then he would always tell me, like, yo, you should get out and try to play basketball, because he was the basketball player of the family. I wasn't no basketball player. He was the basketball player of the family. He's the one that graduated from high school, did all the basketball stuff right. You know what I mean? He did everything how you're supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? Whether you agree with it or don't, he did everything the way in which he was supposed to do it. So um, he did that. And so he was like, bro, you should get out and try to play basketball. There's a lot of tall people that suck out here, and they making it far with basketball, and I don't think you'll suck. First, I'm like, fuck no. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no basketball player. And then they go in to play basketball in college. You got to go to school. I never even went to school. I never did a year in high school, and I dropped out. I mean, I don't know how to do that stuff. But then I ended up going to the hole, man. I got into another fight, and I went to the hole, and I was sitting my whole time in the hole, man. I was in a couple months, and I was thinking, like, damn, well, what am I going to do with my life, man? I'm just pacing back and forth with myself, thinking to myself, what am I going to do with my life, man? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to come back here no more. You know what I'm saying? At this time, I still had, like, three years left to go. And I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I thought about it like, man, why not? I should try, at least try it. You know, what's the worst that happened? Me fail? So what? You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me just try it. So ultimately, I got my GED. Like I said, when that conversation happened, I had about three years left. So you got to think it's about 2008 now. And then um, in 2009, I got my GED. February of 2009, I got my GED. So about two years into my sentence, I got my GED. And... um. Yeah, and after that, I told myself when I get home, I'm going to college. Like I said, man, I've always been the type of dude that when I put my mind to something, it's done, it's over. Whether it's legal or illegal. If I put my mind to something, I'm to it and I'm going hard at it. I give it everything I got, you know what I mean? It just so happens that I didn't do that from the start of my life. If I probably would have applied that to school, I could have been a scientist, I could have been a, a, a astronaut, I could have been a doctor, whatever. I could have been anything I put my mind to, you know what I'm saying? But I applied it to something negative and not something positive. Fortunate enough... For me, I was able to get a second chance, thanks God, you know what I'm saying, like, because cause we all know that it could have been all the way over for me, you know what I'm saying, I could have been sent under the prison, but it didn't work out that way, I was able to get a second chance, so I put my mind into playing basketball when I came home, so when I came home, I dove head first into it, you know what I mean, I put my body through rigorous workouts that I ain't never been through in my entire life, to where I had blisters on my feet, fingers were bleeding, toes bleeding, blistered up toes, all that, I've done it, all that, you know what I'm saying, knees aching, shins feeling like they about to burst. I did all that because I told myself if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it accordingly. I actually ended up um, applying to a college while I was in prison. My last three months, I applied to a college, a D3 community college out here. I ain't even gonna say the name because I don't wanna get them no kind of credit for what I have done in my life. You know what I'm saying? I don't rock with none of the coaches or none of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't like none of them, I never have. But when I went up there, you know, I gave them a fair shot. You know, I went up there and was like, hey man, I got I applied to the school and I heard y'all had a basketball team and I'm looking to try out. You gotta understand I picked this school because I had the weakest basketball D three community college team in Minnesota. So I went there and then they was like, Okay, well this is the tryout day. I went there, tried out, made the team. I wasn't very skilled from the beginning. 
You know, but one thing that I did bring was that dog. I brought that dog. Nobody worked harder than me. I ain't let nobody beat me, no matter what. You know what I'm saying? I was going hard and giving it everything I had every single day. You know what I mean? Now, my mentality wasn't there like it is today. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know, like, plays, and I couldn't be a student of the game. I was still learning things. I would forget plays all the time, all sorts of crazy stuff. But I never would quit. I never, I never ever stopped battling, and I never let nobody outwork me. Now, this has to be said. I never started one single game there, even though I felt like I should have. Definitely felt like I should have because one thing I noticed, man, the entire school's history, they never got one person in Division One, And I remember, I'll never forget this, man. The head coach, man, the assistant, they called me in their office. I ended up getting into a fight with one of my teammates. And um, they called me in their, assist, in their office and they said, um, yo, what are your plans after this? You know, and oh, just so y'all know, I whooped his ass. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what are your plans after this? Um, what you mean, what are my plans after this, man? I plan on going D1. They laughed at me in my face. They said, you plan on going D1? I said, like that, you plan on going D1? I was like, yeah, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I plan on going D1. What you talking about? He's like, ha ha. Both of them laughed. Ha, good luck with that. I said, okay, thank you. I don't need no luck, though. I got God. I don't need no luck. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I never started one game there, man. I knew they didn't get nobody anywhere. So I ended up meeting one of my best friends and my brother to this day, man, David Hicks the third. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go follow his uh, Instagram. It's you see I do this. You know, you see why I do this, D-I-S. Go follow his Instagram, man. Um... Anyway, uh, I ended up meeting him, man, one day playing basketball, trying to be one of, you know what I'm saying, one of my one of my best friends, you know, and uh, he ended up knowing somebody who made basketball highlights. And, they, and what I did was I took all my games from that year, put them all together, made a highlight. And then I went with his mom, Twyla. I went to, um, shout out to Twyla because I know she'll be watching all my videos. Um, I uh, went with his mom to the post office. And at this time, I was going through some things, so I was living with them. You know what I mean? And, um... She went to the post office with me, and I literally mailed off like 60, 60 DVD highlights to every top national junior one, uh, junior college in all of the U.S. You know what I'm saying? 60 of them. In uh, California, Texas, Florida, Connecticut, Maine. I sent them every damn where. In um, Kansas, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And only two people hit me back, only two teams. One was Miami Dade Community College. Uh, they had a black head coach there, a real cool dude. I ain't talked to him much, but he didn't seem like he was really rocking with me. And then there was uh, another dude... Uh, Percy Carr, San Jose City College head coach, been there, veteran, legend there. Um, he actually gave me a shot. I had to transfer my parole out there and everything, man. And he was just like young, helping young brothers up who was trying to come up, man. And to this day, even through all the ups and downs I had with Percy Carr, he's my favorite coach by far because he always going to keep it real with you, you know what I'm saying, for the most part. He's a little old and see now, you know what I'm saying? But he, he was a real dude, man. He gave me a shot. And from there, man, I was able to go D1 and everything, man. So I know he ain't watching YouTube, but if anybody who uh, knows who I'm talking about, let him know that I appreciate him tremendously, man, because he helped me out big time. And I know that was God working through him, man, but he gave me a shot. And without that shot, man, I wouldn't have been able to make it happen. Also, if it wasn't for my girl, you know what I'm saying? My girl actually cashed out on a flight. At that time, I met my girl when I first came home from prison, the one I'm with today. I remember when I first when I first came home from prison, man, and she helped me down, man, financially, mentally, anything you could think of, man, that you want in, in your girl and your ride or die chick. She has every quality of that and some, man, and she helped me down tremendously. And she bought my ticket out there just so I could get out to Cali to be able to get that opportunity to play basketball out there, even though it would require me leaving her. She did that. It was without a moment's hesitation or nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love you, baby. Shout out to you, for real. But after San Jose City College in California, um, I ended up uh, walking on to a D1 in Baltimore, Maryland. It was called Coppin State University. It's a uh, HBCU. For those who don't know what that means, it's Historically Black University. Um, I went there, and then uh, I was I transferred my major to criminal justice, and then everything. And I was supposed to be going on to that team starting. Man, I wish that coach uh, never got fired, man. He was the man, yo. I, I liked him a lot. And shout out to Coach Fang Mitchell, man. That was my man, yo. He was a real cool dude. Fly-ass old black dude, man. That was my that was my kind of dude right there, man. But he ended up actually getting fired. Not fired. They just didn't renew his contract, and then they brought in a new coach. So, ultimately, uh, what the hell is that damn thing? Damn bug. Damn, I hate bugs, man. But anyway... He ended up getting let go. They didn't renew his contract or whatever. And one of my best friends and my another one of my like real brothers, man, uh, Frankie Johnson, man. Shout out to my bro, Frankie Johnson, man. That's my brother right there. Shout out to his mom, his pop, um, 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 Lili, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's my family for real. But anyway, he went to Coppin State and walked on with me. Coach got fired. We both went our separate ways. He went to Virginia. I went to Central Connecticut. And after Central Connecticut, I went to Central Connecticut State. Um, that's another low major D1. Um, I went there. 
Shit didn't work out well, man. At first it started off good, but then it got real ugly. It went decently for me. You know what I'm saying? I've had some games where I did all right, and then I had some games where I ain't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And with the with the opportunities I was given, I did great. You know what I'm saying? But like I, the coaches didn't never believe in me. The same thing I dealt with at that first college, I dealt with at the Division One college. Now you understand? So it was man, it was, it was the week. It was the weakest shit in life. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna be all the way real with y'all, man. It, it was it sucked. On the court, Central Connecticut was a fucking disaster. I should never pick that school. I should have went to Delaware State. But um, that's whatever. That's another story for another time. But um, off the court, it was I actually made some lifelong friends. Shout out to my guy Matt Mobley. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, that's like my brother too. My brother Kyle Vanalis. You know what I'm saying? Then my guys, Fats. They cool, bro. Uh, that's my nigga too. Um, who else, man? Greg. Greg, I know you watching the videos, bro. You my guy, Brody. Kyle, Matt Mobley. Matt Mobley is at St. Bonaventure right now. Shout out to him too, man. Uh, Calvin Alice, he's a professional basketball player now. Greg, he's an engineer. What did I say? I said somebody else. I'm, I'm missing somebody, man. I don't know who I'm missing. But if I miss your name, man, my bad. I forgot about you. Oh, yeah, Fats. Fats, a professional basketball player now, too. Yeah, that's about it, man. That's all the people I really rocked with heavily there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else, they kind of had a little bit of bitch in their blood. You know what I'm saying? Not, not everybody, but you know, for the most part, all of them. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man, shout out to y'all, man. But y'all want to be, y'all want to know what the, the the real bad part was about Central Connecticut State, man? <laughs> they had a 6'3 center playing over me. A 6'3 center playing over me. Now, if a 6'3 center was super cold and raw, I'd be like, man, he cold, you know what I'm saying? He's... But he wasn't better than me, man. No shots at him. He know who he is, but no shots at him. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying I was better. And I am still better, you know what I'm saying? But... The, the, the proof lies in the pudding, man. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, um, just in case one of them bitch-ass motherfuckers watching from that school. But um, what I was going to say, the second thing was the coach lied to me to get me to that school. He lied to me, gassed me up. You know, I got a jump shot. You know what I'm saying? He lying, oh, I'm going to let you shoot all the jump shots. I'm going to let you do this. I'm going to let you do that. You're going to have the green. He's on that type of time with me. Lied to get me there, gassed me all the way up to the mook. Then I got there and my minutes was the most suspect. But anyway, man, after all that was said and done, that was my junior year of college. So now the dude who played over me graduated. He's out of there. So I'm like, okay, now I'm about to go home, and this is about to be my year. So I'm going to go home. I'm putting overtime in the grind. Now, anybody who knows me knows that this was the most time I was in shape in my entire life. This is the best shape I've ever been in my entire life. I was in the gym two times minimum a day, three times a day max. You know what I'm saying? I was in the gym on the weights. I put on 20 pounds. I went crazy that summer. Go back to school, going into the fall, man. I leave it August 21st, go back to Connecticut. You know, we playing five on five to stay in shape, you know, the whole team and everything like that, to stay in shape till strength and conditioning start. Now strength and conditioning start, I'm killing all all these niggas in five on five too. Let's let's get it understood. And then um strength and conditioning starts, man, and then I go in there the first day of strength and conditioning, and the strength and conditioning coach like, yo, um, you gotta go talk to the coach before you can do workouts. And I'm like, Okay, I'm thinking maybe something didn't get cleared or something like that. So I go to the coach's office. Coach straight up tells me, man, hey, man, uh, it doesn't matter how many jump shots you make, how much better you got, how hard you worked or whatever, I don't want you affiliated with the basketball team. So I'm like, oh, why, 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 what's that? They ended up bringing up my criminal history, the athletic director, the head coach, and the assistant coaches. They ended up brought up my criminal history, and that's from t fucking t 10 years ago and telling me that they don't want me affiliated with the basketball team no more. But they're not gonna take away my scholarship. But somebody, somebody did the research into my uh, criminal history or whatever, pulled it up, and it became a big thing in Connecticut. So now they want me to go talk to the police department over there by the school and all that. Talk to the sergeants. Like I'm like, what am I talking to the police for? For what? You know what I'm saying? This was ten years ago. But they brought up my criminal history, man. And ultimately, they had the power. I hired a lawyer and everything, man. They, they, um, they had the power to say, I don't want you on my team. They didn't have to have a legitimate reason. The only thing you have to have a legitimate reason for is to say, uh, I want to take away your scholarship. They couldn't take away my scholarship because they couldn't. You know what I'm saying? But it took away uh, the, the right for me to play basketball with them because they can they can say who they want and who they don't want on their team. You know what I'm saying? But they can't take away the scholarship once you've already signed. they got to have a legitimate reason. You got either had, got in trouble or something. I didn't do none of that. There was no written complaints or written incidents with me or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So they ultimately did that bitch-ass shit, and I didn't get to play my senior year. So... I ain't gonna lie, that shit hurt big time. I was big time crushed. I'm gonna be real with y'all. It wasn't like, no, man, it was whatever. I bounced back. Nah, that shit still leaves a bitter taste in my mouth to this day, man. You know, that my senior year 
had it end like that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's supposed to be a time where you go out with a bang. You know what I'm saying? That you give, put it all on the line and go crazy and gust with it. You know, to the mook. You know, but I ain't. They took that moment from me. You know what I'm saying? For, for some shit that I did ten years ago when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? So it's whatever, man. You know, karma came back around and all they dumbasses got fired. So it's all good. <laughs> but seriously, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't my job to pass judgment, man. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they was going through something in their life that made them a bitch, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, fuck ass people. You know what I'm saying? But. It ain't it ain't my job, you know, to um to pass judgment on them. I leave that up to God, man. So they'll deal with their karma when time come. You know what I mean? Even though I was able to um keep my scholarship, y'all gotta understand how fucking embarrassed I was. Like I was just a six ten student walking around campus, just going to class. You know what I'm saying? Ever since I stepped out the gate of prison, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've been an athlete. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm just a regular student now. You know what I'm saying? Not no shots fired at no regular student, but this is. This is what I've been training for. This is what I. This is what I was built for. This is what I'm going crazy for. This is what I'm putting everything into. You know what I'm saying? And they just took that away from me, that quick. You know what I'm saying? And now, I'm sitting here just a regular student on scholarship. I got to deal with people. When you ain't on the basketball team no more, I got to deal with all that type of embarrassment. You know what I'm saying? That was. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I was crushed. I was crushed. But ultimately, me being who I am, man, I kept my head held high. Said fuck them. They don't know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? They trying to play me. But y'all don't know. I got God on my side, so I can't lose when I got God on my side, and that's a fact. So after that, I ultimately ended up uh, graduating that year with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I went home immediately after, started working on my game, perfecting my craft, and I'm like, I'm about to go overseas and get this bag. You know what I'm saying? What they, what they, what, how they did me and how, how they played me, that doesn't define what kind of basketball player I am or who I am. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna prove myself right first and foremost, and I'm gonna prove everybody else wrong in the process. You know what I'm saying? So I went home, was grinding, 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 grinding. Met an agent by the name of Joe, real cool dude. Shout out to you, Joe, if you're watching this, man. Um, and uh, he signed me to my first NBA contract, or not NBA, I wish. He signed me to my first overseas contract. I had I had uh, offers from him in Spain, Portugal, uh, man, I, man, a, a bunch of places, man. I was even about to go to Africa at one point with my, with my guy Kyle. We couldn't get that deal to fall through. Uh, Germany, and then, uh, what was it I was at? Oh, yeah, and then South America and Central America. And uh, ultimately, I was signed a, a deal, a contract overseas. And then, um, yeah, man, I was supposed to leave the next day. <laughs> I was supposed to leave the next day after signing my contract. And I was in the gym training in preparation, you know, just to stay in shape for while I'm overseas or till I get overseas, you know what I mean, in preparation for it. And, uh, yeah, man, I blew my whole damn knee out. I tore three things. I tore my ACL, my MCL, and my meniscus all at one time during that damn hop step. So, yeah, it's safe to say my whole knee was blew out. But this is the funny part. I blew out my knee when I was in the gym with PJ. Y'all know PJ if y'all been in my channel for a long time. I was in the gym with PJ, man. Another professional basketball player play overseas, played China, played everywhere you can think of. And um, we were in the hospital. He takes me to the hospital after. I had no fucking health insurance. So I'm telling PJ, bro, I'm not trying to go to the hospital, bro. I know my knee is mangled, but I can't go to the hospital because I ain't got no health insurance. So I can't go. PJ forced me to go anyway. So now I'm still paying off that bill every month to this day. Because that dude forced me to go to the hospital when I knew I shouldn't went when I didn't have health insurance. But he convinced me that they would back pay. They did not back pay. So now I'm stuck with this bill that I'm paying every month. But anyway, after all that, I'm laughing uh, while I'm in um, the hospital with PJ. PJ said, bro, why are you laughing, bro? This ain't funny. I just started laughing because I remember the last time I went through something like this, which ain't even close. What I went through last time with prison was way worse than this knee. This is just basketball. You know what I'm saying? I've never been passionate about basketball. I never watched basketball. Never played basketball in my life until I got out of prison. So I wasn't really passionate about basketball anyway. But like I said, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to put everything I got into it to be successful at it. If I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. So that followed over with basketball. So fast forward to while I'm in this uh, emergency room with PJ and I'm laughing. I said, bro, the last time something like this happened, I remember I was in prison and my mom was always telling me, son, something good going to come from this. And I'm like, man, at that time, I was thinking, what the hell good going to come from this? I'm in prison for four years out of my life. You know what I'm saying? While I'm in here sitting still, the whole world is moving around and getting better, progressing. I'm just sitting in one spot. And I ain't growing or nothing. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm in the hospital, and I laugh because prison was the best and the worst thing that ever happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I would have never changed. I probably would have been dead or doing life in prison if it wasn't uh, for me going to prison for them four years. You know what I'm saying? It made me change my whole life around. So they, I was able to get a second chance. I was fortunate enough. So I look at this situation. I start laughing. PJ said, why are you laughing, bro? It ain't funny, bro. I said, because, bro, I know God got something planned for me. He got something great planned for me, bro, because I was supposed to leave tomorrow. He didn't even know I was supposed to leave tomorrow. He like, yeah, you supposed to leave tomorrow? I said, I'm supposed to leave tomorrow, bro. You know what I'm saying? To go play professional basketball. I was supposed to do that tomorrow. 
and I just blew it out. So I'm laughing because I know God got something planned for me because it wasn't meant for me to go over there. Y'all don't understand how hard it was to have that positive mindset when I just blew out my knee after signing the contract, after everything that happened to me in Connecticut. You know what I'm saying? But I believed in my faith of God, you know what I'm saying, in the plan that he has for me more than I did the uh, plan I had planned for myself. And ultimately, I was right. God was right. I ended up getting the surgery. I ended up bouncing back right. I'm all the way 100% now. I can play 5-on-5. Five five. I can play 1-on-1, one one, but I would never in life because it's just there's no point right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a basketball player. I'm not getting It's not paying my bills. And uh, I was actually in preparation after I got the surgery doing my physical therapy to get back overseas. But <clears throat> when I was doing my physical therapy and everything, man, like I said, I was crushed. I was crushed from what they did to me in Connecticut. I was crushed, you know what I'm saying, that my knee blew out, that I wasn't able to go overseas and prove myself right and everybody else wrong. It was just a lot of things that wasn't going my way, man. So I ultimately ended up pulling the trigger on getting this car at a time when I shouldn't have. And what I mean by that is there's so many things that weren't going my way, and I was just sick of things not going my way, man. So I, I finally – I used to watch YouTube for years when I was in college. Anybody who knows me and has been a real good friend of mine, they know that's all I was focused on was cars and YouTube and all that shit when I was playing basketball. I cared about that more than I cared about basketball, even though I gave it everything I had. You know what I mean? Um – that, man, one day I was just, man, something came over me where I was like, man, what am I waiting for about getting this Hellcat? I'm not in a great financial situation to get this Hellcat at that time. So I'm like, what am I waiting for, man? So many other things ain't going my way. Something got to go my way, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of not having what I want. I'm tired of things not going my way. Fuck that, man. I'm pulling the trigger on getting this Hellcat today. Or, and I didn't end up pulling it that day. I ended up getting it like a month later. Because I had to look for the right car, look for the right time and the specials and the leases. And it just so happened that a lease special came along my way uh, and it was only available for a week. And that was when they first started coming out with the um, Demon Talk and everything. So they were trying to get rid of the Hellcats that were in inventory. So they came out with a great lease special where it was like 600 a month or something like that. Excuse me. And I ultimately ended up pulling the trigger on getting that one, man. And uh, I ended up getting my Hellcat. It was crazy because after having that car for a few months, I didn't have a YouTube. I had, a car, I had my Hellcat for a couple months. No YouTube, no nothing. And it was just so crazy because I felt so surreal driving in my dream car every single day. Everything hasn't been going my way, but this is the one thing that went my way. You know what I mean? And I'm like, man, this is crazy. Every day was a surreal feeling, man. And it still is today. You know, but I was able to turn something negative into something positive. And that's crazy because that's a God-given trait that I've been able to have my entire life. You know, I just didn't notice it while I was going through it. But I've always turned something negative into positive thanks to God. You know what I'm saying? And I got a great support cast, too. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of prison, my mom. My little brother, Derry, man, they were huge, huge help to me. You know what I'm saying? The transitions uh, to go from transitioning my mindset from a prison mindset to the mindset I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? So I ultimately, like I said, I ultimately ended up pulling the trigger on getting a Hellcat, man. And then after a couple months not having it, I wanted other people to feel how I was feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, because I was really thinking one day, like, man, if I did this shit, it's a fact that anybody can do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I went from literally... From a prison inmate to a Division One basketball player to a YouTuber. Now, who you know that's done that? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I really felt like I'm touched by God, man. Like He working through me to work through, to, to talk to y'all. Whatever the case is, I know He working through me. I feel touched by God, man. Because when I got my Hellcat, I'm like, yo, I was just pleased having it. Then something happened and came over me. I was like, man, I want to make a YouTube, and I want to tell people that they can do this too. You know what I'm saying? I want to tell people they can build up their credit. That if you were all the way at ground zero, you can make it to the top. You know what I'm saying? So, ultimately, I made my YouTube, and now I'm telling y'all this, man. That's why I always tell y'all, anybody who's ever watched any of my other videos, man, I tell y'all procrastination is the biggest dream killer, man. Because when I first started, I never planned on officially making a YouTube until the day that I just told y'all about, man. But once I did it, I was still kind of procrastinating because I wasn't used to doing this. I wasn't used to talking to the camera. I wasn't used to, you know, just vlogging or you know what I mean I, ain't, I don't know anybody who ever did nothing like this and I ain't never did it myself so it felt kind of weird just talking to a camera sitting in the car and talking to a camera you know what I'm saying but ultimately obviously I did it and got used to it and now here I am a real live YouTuber a prison inmate divisional basketball player to a real live certified YouTuber I got a hundred thousand subscribers man how crazy is that shit look at the journey look at look at everything I've had to get through and the journey I've had to take to get to where I'm at today and yet I'm still here I'm a living testament that anything is possible, man. And as long as you got God on side, you never lose it, man. You can do anything you put your mind to, man. Whether you're a kid, a grown man, it's never too late to change and do something better or more great. You know what I'm saying? I'm a living testament to that, man. I'm telling y'all, you can do anything you put your mind to, man. I'm not just saying that to be saying it. It's 1,000% 
Facts. That's why I always tell y'all God is beyond great. You know what I'm saying? Because look at where I've come from and look where I'm at today. I'm a real life fucking YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? I would have never thought of it. I'm saying like everything I've done before YouTube was all planned. That was all part of my plan and obviously part of God's plan. But I didn't plan on stopping basketball. I planned on shit going to the league if I could have. I planned on going to the top Euro leagues overseas if I could have. Even though, I, like I told you, I've never been passionate about basketball, never watched basketball as a kid, never been a student of the game of basketball. But like I said, when I pick up something, I ain't picking it up and I'm going hard at it. Just like I did with my YouTube. I ain't playing no games with this. I'm going hard with every single thing I do. You know what I'm saying? But that was God's plan, but for me to get to where I'm at right now. My plan was to go as far as I could with basketball because that's the only I had tunnel vision. Like I said, when I pick up something, I'm going as far as I can and I got tunnel vision with it. I want to be the best at it. That wasn't God's plan. You know what I'm saying? And I trusted his plan that he had for me. And look where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here talking to y'all, talking to a damn GoPro Hero 5 YouTuber, man. I'm a, I'm a damn YouTuber, man. You know what I'm saying? Like with a Hellcat that changes colors. You know, when I, I got, I bought my mom a dream car. I got so many other things in the making right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I never, I never thought it'd be like this from YouTube. I was always watching YouTube, but I didn't think I would actually be a YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? It just kind of happened that way. It was in God's plan, man. And man, this, this shit is bigger than cars. This shit is bigger than motorcycles. This is bigger than raps. This is bigger than, bigger than any of this material shit you could think about, man. This shit is about this right here. Letting y'all know this. Letting y'all, me get to know y'all. Y'all get to know me. You know what I'm saying? And letting y'all know that things are possible, man. The best thing you can give somebody is hope, faith. You know what I'm saying? Because that'll never die. If you give somebody the right hope and the right faith, that'll never die, man. You know what I'm saying? You believe you can do anything. There's, people hate that. People don't want to make you believe that you can do anything. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're in their world. Now you can make it past them. I don't care about people making it past me. I want people, I want to bring people up here with me. You know what I'm saying? And for those who are at the top, I want you to grab my hand and try to pull me up. I'll pull them up. Let's let's pull each other up. You know what I'm saying? That's how I am. I want everybody to eat. If I'm eating, I want everybody to eat. I don't want to be eating steaks and then y'all eating McDonald's. I want everybody eating steaks. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody eating filet mignons and asparagus tips and what if, you know, whatever else you can think of, caviar, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never even tried it, but still, like that's what I want. If I eat, I want everybody to eat, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I always tell y'all, man, God is beyond great, man. I went from, like I told y'all, man, reiterate, reiterate, reiterate. I went from a prison inmate to a Division One basketball player. Even though I never played basketball a day in my life. From a basketball player to a YouTuber, even though I've never been in front of a camera in my entire life. Y'all tell me what's the odds of that, man. That's why when people ask me, like, how did you do what you did? I don't know. It's God, man. I did my part. I worked hard at everything I did. But I'd be lying here to sit here and say that I did it all by myself. I had a good support cast, man. My mom, my brother, Derry. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'm serious, man. You know, my girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a good support cast, man. A good support cast. And along my way of doing great things and working really hard at things, I met some real great, phenomenal people that really, phenomenal people that really helped me out. You know what I'm saying? They helped me bump up them levels. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just me climbing up myself. I had people grab my hand along the way, pulling me up. So what do you think I'm trying to do with people that I know? I'm trying to pull people up too and help them up. You know what I'm saying? So it's just all love, man. I never expected to be where I'm at today. I always dreamed about it, always prayed about it, always thought about it. But I never, like, could actually just be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, in my head, I, I would see it. I would envision it. If you envision it, you, you, can, you, can, you can achieve it. But... It's different, man. Once you actually achieve it and you sit in it and you you feel it and you're you're doing this shit every day, you know what I'm saying? You getting these checks, man. It's, it's love, man. It's all love. But now y'all know about me, man. Now y'all know about me and everything I've been through. I know a lot of people wouldn't have guessed that, you know what I mean? Because of how I look on the exterior, light skin, green eyes. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people probably just assumed I had a cushy life, you know, played basketball my whole life and all that good shit. Probably saved us some bread. No, I ain't had that. You know what I'm saying? My parents ain't had that. We was all poor, you know what I'm saying? We, now, poor is all relative. We ain't, we weren't like in Cambodia poor, you know what I'm saying? Eating bugs and all that off the floor. I ain't saying that's what they doing, but we weren't doing that. What y'all see is what y'all get with me, man. Like I told y'all, the same way y'all gonna be in person, same way I am on camera, man. Ain't nothing gonna change about that, man. But now y'all know who I am. And that's why I say never judge a book by its cover because you would have never guessed. You know? But just like that, man, like I said, y'all know who I am. I don't know what else we need to say to y'all. I think that about sums up my life, man. So... Hopefully that was informative for y'all, you know what I'm saying? And I hope that that motivates some people, you know, to get up off their ass 
and, and put in that work, man, and, and be something great and keep striving for greatness and keep believing in yourself and keep having faith in God, man. Even when things seem all bad, like like it can't it can't get no worse or it can't get no better. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep on pushing, man, and just have faith that everything will work itself out. You know what I'm saying? Because it has done that with me, so it could do that with you too. You know what I'm saying? I come from nothing, and now I'm actually working up to something. You know, so just like that, man, this video's over. Hope y'all dig that. I'm out of here, man. Bong. See y'all in the next video, man. I'm gone. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Y'all want to buy some merch? Like I said at the beginning of the video, all the info's in the description below. Click that show more. Order you some merch, man. Support the movement. I really appreciate it. Let me get y'all this start up real quick, man, so we get up out of here, man. Here we go. Hold on. Let it burble up. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Just like that, I'm gone, man. See y'all for real this time.